Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. Today we are going to talk about T-SQL anti-patterns. When I say we are going to talk about it does not mean that I'm just going to discuss the concept but I'm also going to demo it to you. Well, many and almost all of our tutorials on our YouTube channel are demo packed. They contain a lot of demos and that's how you learn. You watch those demos and then you try to practice it in your own environment and that's how you learn. So what do you mean by T-SQL anti-patterns and what is this term like anti-patterns? Now in simple words, T-SQL anti-pattern would mean bad T-SQL. Uh, there, are, there are many commonly known bad T-SQL patterns which are bad for SQL Server, uh, they are bad for the optimizer and when you submit those kind of T-SQLs to the optimizer, the optimizer sometimes does not know how to deal with them in, in the most efficient way uh, and uh, you get a poor execution plan, your query suffers, the execution time, sometimes maybe it consumes more CPU resources or more memory, uh, maybe the optimizer um, uh, does not know how the, the best way to optimize it and sometimes it would just uh, uh, you know output an execution plan which is less efficient so a lot of bad things might happen and that's how that's how this term like tc equal anti pattern uh, comes up and uh, there are these known anti patterns and my intention here is to kind of record multiple videos uh, and i can share one anti pattern in each video so in this one in this tutorial i am going to talk about implicit conversion. Now implicit conversion is a very very common T-SQL anti-pattern. So many performance tuning assignments and engagements that I go to and I, I see this all the time in T-SQL code where you have implicit conversion and that leads to excessive CPU cycles. More CPU cycles are consumed and uh, uh, there are easy ways to fix it. Um, that's one uh, way uh, is like just don't do implicit conversions and if you still have to do it you might want to do explicit conversion so there are all these possibilities okay so let's get down to demos and uh, let me show you this first uh, t-sql anti-pattern implicit conversion and i will also show you how you can identify that this is happening inside your sql server environment Okay, we are going to use AdventureWorks 2016 there and let's turn on statistics time because that will give you some CPU metrics <clears throat> that you might be interested in. Now, a very simple query here which does varchar to nvarchar conversion. Now, account number, if I take the cursor over account number, just look at that carefully. It says column account number and uh, let me zoom in. And yes, that is varchar. And on the right hand side of the equality operator, I have an n varchar data there. So like that's an uh, Unicode n prefix, which means it is n varchar. Let's turn on the actual execution plan. When you do this, let's go and execute. First things first, in the execution plan, you will see that on the select operator, there is an exclamation mark there. And if you take the cursor over here, it gives you a warning, right? It clearly says type conversion in expression, convert implicit, blah, 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 and may affect seek plan in query plan choice. Now, I'm not discussing index scan, seek, etc. and all of those things, arguability. Um, those are other anti-patterns. So this one is about uh, implicit conversion. So implicit conversion has happened. Let's jump over to the messages tab here. And what you will observe is CPU time. Look at this CPU time here. Now to you right now, the CPU time will look like, oh, it's just about like 200 milliseconds. And that's not quite uh, a bit, but it does matter. I mean, you are optimizing every millisecond when it comes to tuning T-SQL, when it comes to query tuning and optimization, 200 milliseconds. If there is a way to optimize this, that's quite a good deal. So note that this is 200 milliseconds is what, um, you know, this thread has spent on the CPU. Now to fix this is very straightforward, at least this one, is I can get rid of this n prefix, right? So I'll just show it to you. I just kind of deleted this, I removed this, so that I have varchar on both sides of the equality operator, the account number, which is the column, and the constant here. Let's go and execute this once more. 
Let's jump over here and jump over to the execution plan. And first things you will notice that the warning uh, sign uh, symbol on the select operator is gone, which means of course there is no implicit conversion now. But did it really improve performance or in terms of resource consumption? Let's jump over to the messages tab and you will observe. Yes, it does. So CPU time is zero milliseconds, which means negligible which means that 200 milliseconds was that additional CPU cycles consumption only to perform that implicit conversion. A lot of things will come to your mind right now, which is it's just a small query. We're just optimizing by 200 milliseconds. But let me give you certain things food of food for thought, which is what if you have number of such small chatty queries coming and hitting SQL Server all the time? Now just multiply that with 200 milliseconds and then you will see in magnitude in totality the amount of CPU cycles you're saving. The second thing is, okay, if you really have to uh, convert, what can you really do? You can do explicit conversion. Instead of SQL Server figuring out the, the data types like from which data type to convert uh, from to, uh, you leaving that decision on SQL Server, you can do explicit conversion by using convert or cache, you know, all those T SQL functions and you can tell SQL Server the source data type and the target data type. You will see CPU optimization happening there as well. In our performance tuning masterclass, we cover all of that. I, I stress SQL Server with such chatty queries and they do all, they, all of them do implicit conversions and we record the execution time. Then we fix the query and then we run, we stress again with the modified version of the query and we record the execution time. And then you can clearly see a huge, huge performance difference. Okay, one more thing, I you know, bonus stuff with this video. You know, you have these queries running and you're thinking about can can you capture these queries? You know, I, I, I want to capture all these workloads running in my environment uh, that are performing implicit conversion. Yes, you can. You can do that uh, with extended events. Let's do that very quickly. So in management, when you expand management, you have extended events. Let me just zoom this to you uh, for you management and then extended events. You have sessions. I'm going to quickly create a new session. I'm not following any best practice here or anything. I'm just it's just for the purpose of demo. Let's just call this as test. Jump over to events. And in the events, you got to search for plan affecting convert. And there you go. At least the search works. So in the event library, this is the event that you want to bother about plan affecting convert. This is going to capture your workload, right? Which is causing that implicit conversion. Select the event, get it on the right side there. Data storage and all of that. Just just keep it default, right? Let's just click on OK and let's right click and start the session and then right click and watch live data. I'm quickly going to um, do this again. I'm going to put that N back and run this and let's see if extended event captures this. There you go. Extended event has captured that. <coughs> there you go. This one. So if you see, this is the default payload. I mean, if you know extended events, you can have extra global fields as well. We call that actions in the in the extended events terminology. And there you go. So this was the code that you were running. And look at this conversion that is happening here. Well, this is one way how you can capture this using extended events. Uh, then uh, there is a way how you can find out all these execution plans from the plan cache. That's a bit of a tricky code because um, in you can find the implicit conversion inside the plan cache uh, in the plan XML. So that's like shredding the XML and finding. Um, it's a tough call. I mean, a little expensive query for the production server, but you can still do that. That's one way. Another way. Uh, a third way, if you are on SQL Server 2022, there is an extended event session which says query underscore anti pattern. If you are running, uh, you can create a session with that event, with that uh, event query anti patterns, and it has 
a set of predefined anti-patterns that it can capture. Implicit conversion is one of them. So yeah, there, there are a couple of these ways how you can identify the workloads that are causing implicit conversion. And I bet you there will be many of them in your environment. All right, friends, hope you have found this video and this tutorial useful. Query anti-pattern, T-SQL anti-pattern. And yeah, search in our channel for more of them. Uh, you can search on the keyword anti-pattern and you will find a couple of more videos. All right, friends, before I sign off, uh, do not forget to check out sqlmaestros.com. We have the performance tuning masterclass live coming up in a few days. And uh, that is an annual feature, 40 hours of deep dive content. I mean, you don't really need to sign up for small modules here and there. If you are someone who's looking for a comprehensive course on SQL Server performance during uh, troubleshooting performance and query optimization, this is the one. Not only do you uh, get to attend live, you also get the class recordings for a lifetime. So that is a huge deal. And if you're someone who uh, is looking for some discounts, then you can drop an email to contact at sqlmaestros.com. I call out the email ID again. It is contact at the rate sqlmaestros.com. Drop us an email and someone from the team can share a discount code for you. Hurry up. And even if you are not keen uh, in paid classes, uh, no worries at all. We'll continue to give you a lot of free content on our YouTube channel. See you soon. Happy SQL.